Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you're enjoying yourselves so far. I grew up with SSO, and I remember queuing up for tickets as a student. It's always an honor serving SSO, and especially today for Singapore in this concert. Coming up next, we'd like to introduce to you a violin concerto titled Vendor. And immediately, you'll think about our national flower, Vendor Miss Joachim. This piece was first commissioned by the Ministry of Education back in 2015 for the SG15 celebrations. However, tonight is actually the first time it's being performed live in public. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the world premiere of Vendor. And I'd like you to welcome the composer, Mr. Chen Zhang Yi. Please welcome. Hey, Danny. Hi, Zhang Yi. I know Zhang Yi by his Chinese name, Chen Zhang Yi, um, because I read about a lot of his uh, articles, his interviews. We were just chatting about um, that this is going to be the world premiere of Venda, and you must be really excited about it and nervous as well. More, more about the talking, but yeah. <laughs> okay. A lot of your pieces uh, I've read, I'm very familiar, is about Singapore. So you distinctively would like to feature Singapore in a lot of your compositions. Is there a reason for that? What are your inspirations behind your arrangements and compositions? Yep, that's right. Um, very often I get inspired by Singaporean culture. So for example, in my chamber operas, I, I include Singlish, I write about laksa, I write about window shopping, I write about kopi tiam, so uh, things like that in, in the opera. And, and in the orchestral music, instrumental music, I often get inspired by scenery in Singapore and nature. So like in pieces that the SSO has played, like Rain Tree and uh, what you're going to hear today, uh, Vanda, is about nature. A lot of people wouldn't possibly associate um, things that are Singaporean with classical music. Um, is that quite a challenge for you? A yes and no. Yeah, okay, all right. I'm trying to get him to chat a little bit more because, you know, I wanted to put him at ease. Uh, he's saying that it's not very often that he gets to meet um, the audience in a live concert. All right, tell me a little bit more about the inspiration behind Vanda. Okay, Vanda, uh, well, is the national flower. I thought it's a nice theme to use as the inspiration for the violin concerto because Vanda Miss Joachim uh, also refers to a famous violin concerto by Brahms. And uh, it was written for the violinist called um, Joachim. So it sounds almost the same, and I thought it's a fitting uh, theme for that. Joachim has uh, the same sound as Joachim as well. Very yes. Good. All right. I'm going to get you into the light a little bit because you're very shy and you're just stepping away from the limelight. I'll let everybody see you clearly and as well as for those uh, in Facebook Live as well. Tell me about the different movements that we're going to be listening to. So, so in Vanda, there's three movements, um, like a standard violin concerto. The first movement uh, features two main uh, themes, two main melodies, uh, which represent the Papa Vanda and the Mama Vanda. So, and when they return, these two melodies are fused together as a hybrid, just like the Vanda Miss Joachim. In the second movement, um, it's the central part is about the garden city, which is surrounded by uh, skyscrapers in uh, this kind of a cosmopolitan, groovy, uh, scherzo idea. And in the last movement, it's, it's about the bustling city life of modern Singapore. And uh, you have to look out for uh, the amazing solo violin near the end of the, um, the concerto, yeah. By our soloist. Yes, it's gonna be coming name, on. Yes. All right. So it's wonderful to put pictures in our minds as well. I'm going to be listening to the music in just a while. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special guest to perform for us right here tonight. Capturing all the intricate musical nuances is renowned Singaporean violinist, Kam Ning. Would you please put your hands together to welcome Ms. Kam Ning. I'd like to invite our conductor, Mr. Daryl Ong, back on stage again. And also a big hand for Mr. Chen Zhang Yi. I'd like to invite him back to his seat and enjoy this performance. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you, Vanda.
Ladies and gentlemen, would you once again please welcome Kam Ning. Please take center stage. Was it wonderful? A big round of applause. If you haven't noticed, uh, there was a little piece in there, it's a cadenza, uh, which you wrote um, in response. Um, you were inspired by Zhang Yi's um, piece. Do you want to share with us a little bit about that? Yes, 
Yes, well, Zhang Yi sprang a bit of a surprise, a bit of a last minute surprise on me. He said uh, sort of a month before, Ning, could you please write your own cadenza? And he'd already written one, but uh, he just wanted me to work a bit harder. So I did. And um, I, you know, I, I think cadenzas should always reflect the context, of course, of the piece. But, um, you know, Zhang Yi is very nice. So he said, you can, you know, write things that you'd like and things that you tend toward, and I quite like jazz, actually. So, I put a bit of that in there. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, yeah, so, but that was really a lovely process to do it. So thank you, thank you for that. A bit lazy, a bit irresponsible, but we, we love that. Wonderful arrangement as well. There was lots of love from coming to Changi as well. I could see, you know, at the beginning and then at the end also you, you acknowledge him. Um, I was getting a bit jealous um, because unknown to many people here, I actually know Kam Ning as Ning Ning. <laughs> this goes way, way back, I think more than 30 over years. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm forcing you to respond to that. 35 years. 35 years? Yes. 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 I'm surprised you remember. So this was when she was six years old and I was nine years old. <laughs> oh, sorry, am I revealing too much? Sorry. Too late, too late, too late. <laughs> so what happened was um, we both filmed uh, an episode for a children's television series. It was way back then. I actually was afraid that she would forget and I brought a photo to remind her. Uh, this was actually a still that was taken while we were filming and you were six then. Um, I recognize you right now because you haven't changed at all. <laughs> How was it like for you um, to have started so young? To have started acting so young, you mean? My acting career really took off. Uh, performing, uh, yeah. It's amazing actually because I'm sure there are lots of you know, children who, who can identify with this. That children just don't feel any fear when we play, you know, and so it's, it's, it's um, I mean, I've been playing concerts for so many years, and it's amazing the psychological process that has changed over the decades that I've been doing it, so um, it's, it's an honor, it's an honor to do it, yeah. But let's talk about Xiao Wuzi, Xiao Wuzi was that show that you started talking about and then you changed the subject, that was very smooth, so, so we did, a, we did a little episode of Young Innocence, I think it's called in English, but it's Xiao Wu Zi in Chinese. That's right. Yeah, I remember. So um, this handsome young man was called Kang Kang in the show, and he was, what, nine, did you say you were nine? I was six. And I just told, I, I haven't seen him all this time. I just, I just saw him now, and I said, do you know what? I had a massive crush on you <laughs> when we filmed it. Massive. And, you know, I didn't even know what his real name was. So I would ring him up, right? I, I would call him up and say, hello, Kang Kang. Uh, and he's like, some more. I don't know. I mean, what, what, do you, what do you say when you're six and you have a crush on someone? I don't know. But do you remember I would call you all those hours on the phone, the monologue phone? Do you remember those phones? Um, Kang Kang, hello, what are you doing? You know, he's like, some more. You know, I don't know what. But, um, yeah, so it's quite a revelation to be able to to see you now in person and tell you that I used to have a crush on you. I have to grab the mic back from her, you know, otherwise I'm gonna be as shy as Shang Yi on stage. Yeah, this is, well, yeah, I, I should have recorded all those conversations so that I can blackmail you right now, you know. But coming back to Singapore to perform every time, what does it mean to you to be on stage, to be playing for Singapore audience? I mean, it's, I'm so proud. I mean, happy National Day, by the way, everybody. I'm so proud. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, I'm so totally, utterly, utterly proud to be a Singaporean. I mean, not least because we've got the most powerful passport on the planet, you know, but also really, I mean, it's, it's, it's there's nowhere, there's nowhere like Singapore. So I'm so, so thrilled. Thank you. Thank you so much. I heard that I have the liberty to ask this question. Do you want to hear more from Kam Ning? Yes? If you want to hear more, you got to clap louder than that. So, seeing that it's Singapore party night, 
I'm going to play a Singaporean encore. Um, the, the piece is very much inspired by a certain little part of Singapore called Chinatown. Um, you'll hear some cymbals, some fireworks, some drums, maybe a little lion dance in there. I happen to know the composer quite well. And actually, you know him. So um, this is the third movement from Sonata Huai Gu, written in 1976 by the one and only Kam Ki Yong. Kam Ning's father. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together once again for Kam Ning and SSO. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we will now have a 20-minute interval.